Hi angels, Quiet Queen here, and this beautiful young lady is my daughter, and this young lady here is my granddaughter, Anaya. Say hi. <laughs> well, angels, I wanted to do a, va um, a video what my daughter did after watching the uh, video that I did on um, Astro, the response or Astro Boo Baby's, um, was it Demonic Forces and Lucid Dreaming? And she wanted to make a comment. She saw the response on it and that you all were really interested in topics like that. So um, we wanted to do a video. Now, Ayana, you wanted to talk about experiences that you had relative to lucid dreaming and astral travel and things like that. But let me, before I let Ayana speak, I wanted to say that um, uh, things like this run very heavily in our family. Have you noticed that? Mm -hmm. With all of the women in our family specifically, not so much the men occasionally, but the women in our family are very, very extremely psychic, extremely sensitive, and do uh, a lot of um, um, things or have lots of interest in um, supernatural events. So you want to tell us about one of the many um, dreams or experiences that you had? What do you want to tell Everybody right now. Well, one thing I want to keep, you know, what we had spoke about earlier, um, an incident that happened to me at my work. Mm -hmm. I kind of want to keep that like a surprise because there's a video that was going to be made and I'll talk about it mm -hmm. in that video. Mm -hmm. um, so basically when I watched my mom's video about the astro traveling and, you know, the dream about with the, with the dog, she told me this, this dream before. And it didn't even occur to me until now that this whole time I've been astral traveling. I've always said, well, I lucid dream all the time, no problem. Because it seems like, well, everybody should do it when you know mm -hmm. how to do it. But, um, And you lucid dream so much and, and it's just so, such a norm that you think that everybody does it. Yeah. But what you fail to realize is everybody can't do and it. some people really don't know how to lucid dream. They don't know how to control their dreams either. And... A lot of people are afraid of their dreams. Mm -hmm. Actually, I don't know if this is even. Do you have? Do you have to edit your videos? Not really. Oh crap! Why? Because you don't have to edit this. Okay. I could probably edit it for you. Um, I had a dream the other day. It was kind of like an apocalypse, the end of the world, with me and my husband, and. It wasn't apocalypse like zombies or monsters. It was a force. It was mm -hmm. like something controlling everything. It was controlling cars, like electronics. Mm -hmm. It was con it was sirens going off from mm -hmm. God knows where. Oh my goodness. And people were running everywhere and it was aggressive and it was evil. And we were trying to drive off in the car and, and something was smashing my car. It was backed into us and it was trying to kill us, obviously. So we got out and we ran off. And there were people trying to get out and there was gates and there was a car and these people were talking to the car because whatever it was was controlling the car. Mm. And they said, can we get past? And the car was just, no! And it started going crazy and it, it spilled out this liquid that as soon as it touched you it froze and so my husband got caught in it and he was standing in it and it froze all the way up him so he was in this big cube of ice oh gosh and i had to do some puzzle or whatever to get him free and i was as honestly i was a little bit scared because us my man <laughs> <laughs> my big daddy no. <laughs> but um. i had to go through a puzzle and at that moment i was just like i'm done doing this you're not gonna, con um, you're not gonna mm -hmm. control me. And so, at that moment, the dream was over. So, really, you can wake yourself out Ex of your dream. Not only that, you could, you have so much power. I'll say this in another video. You have so much power in your loose, in your, in your dreams. Even if you don't feel like it's a lucid dream, you can be make it become a lucid dream. In my opinion, every single dream is a lucid dream. You can control everything. I've Someone sent me a message saying that they had a dream that they were being chased. Someone else sent me a message saying that they had a dream that they were constantly falling. I used to have dreams that I was constantly falling, and it's typically symbolic to something. But what you do is allow yourself to fall. Allow yourself to fall and watch and see what happens. You know what happens? I'm going to tell you almost 100% of the time, what happens is you fall... And then you'll stop, and then you'll stand upright, and 
your feet will be flat on the floor or you'll fall in some water or some cotton or something. It's the falling it's part is what to you. It's specific to the yes. person you are. The falling part is what's scary to everybody. But allow yourself to go through it or just say, I don't want to fall anymore and stop it. You just have to really control self yourself. Control. Self yes, self control. <laughs> Mm hmm So what are, uh, Ayana, you alluded to earlier about uh, another dream that you had that I thought was really, really amazing. Well, actually it wasn't a dream. Well, something that happened to you for real at her job is going to knock your socks off. I'm planning on doing a dinner party um, in a couple of weeks. And I'm planning on getting all of my, all of the women in my family together. It's like, how many is that? 12 of us. And we all are very sensitive and psychic and have all of this. You all are going to love this. I'm serious. I know I've been saying, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that. But I'm really going to get them together. Um, I'm kind of kind of going to shock culture them. because <laughs> I kind of want to make it clear to people who are like, oh, that's evil. We're not like practicing any type of magic no. or anything. I, believe, I just went to church today. Happy Resurrection Day. I believe I in the Lord. Amen. <laughs> Praise Him. <laughs> so, I'm not like some magic practicing, you know, like doing witchcraft or whatever. Woo -doo. We don't do that. I mean, people, we're just, sens we're just we're sensitive. I don't want to say the word psychic because that word has been abused so much, but people are like that. People are like that in churches all the time. I don't even though I attend church occasionally, I don't particularly have a particular de denomination, although the church I attend sometimes is Baptist. But I am interested in all type of spirituality all the time. I, I've studied everything because I'm nosy and thirsty for knowledge. So that's what this video is basically about. I want to introduce you and she you can't see the little one anymore. Can you want to say bye bye, hi, bye, whatever? Oh, okay. No, oh, I thought she was done. What did you want to talk about? Say hi. By the way, her name is her baby's name backwards. Yeah. It's got to be about me because it's not going to be about me for the rest of my life. So. <laughs> um, something else I wanted to talk about. I had a dream. And it was so powerful that I literally woke up crying. Mm. And it was it broke my heart. And it, I, it was probably a couple people in my dream that I recognized from school. But I wasn't really like close to them. I was in high school at the time. I think I was in eleventh grade. Um, and I didn't want to forget the dream. That's why I wrote it down. I think because I wrote it down, I remember I it. I think I remember you telling me about this. I may have told you about it. Okay, so we were. It was kind of like a spring break type thing. We were on a beach lake. There was a lake, but it was lots of sand. There was like. A patio with like the tiki torches and everything and everybody was having fun and I was sitting on the, the patio and there was this um, medium skin she was a little she was about the tone of my mom maybe a little bit darker her name was Cheyenne but we called her I called her baby because she was sweet like baby and sweet sweet person I was sitting her there with her my best friend don't know who this girl is, by the way. I never met this girl named Cheyenne. Don't know if you recognize her face if I was to see her. Well, yeah, I would, because she was in my dream. But anyway, we gotta edit that part. Um, these guys came up to us and they got us some ice cream. You and stuck it up her nose. Oh, I'm sorry. This lady, it was like a security guard watching over all the the miners. It was chasing a young teenager. She had like an MP3 little electronic device. She was trying to get it from the little girl, the, the girl, but she started holding it over the edge of the, the patio because it was half on the beach, half on the water. And she accidentally dropped it in the water. And so they were like, oh, and so they walked off. And I have this underwater view of the electronic device and it was floating in the water and it was still on. It was on a song and I really wish I had to pay more attention to what song it was playing. But it floated over to this metal box that was connected to the TV and I knew that was bad. It meant it was going to explode. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so I, I was back on top of the water and myself and... All of a sudden, there was this 
big explosion and wave and everybody was trying to evacuate and get away as far as we can and everything was just eventually covered in water and I'm trying to find baby and I'm screaming her name and I'm like baby baby where are you and she's like oh I forgot to tell you previous to this I was in the car in a, in a forest with my mom my brother and my, my, my dad and we were driving there was snow everywhere and it was like naked trees it was the most beautiful thing I've ever seen, seriously, and it, I felt it in my heart. It was so pretty. And there was like a bridge, and there was this big, huge tree. I mean, it was so big. It looked like it was built. Mm, a tree that looked like it was built. It was, that was That's like, symbolic. Trees are symbolic in your dreams. Go ahead. That was in the color purple. What? Where it was like, they were, and they were big, so big, they looked like they were built. Oh, okay. Anyway. I haven't seen color purple um, in a while. But it was huge, and so baby grabbed my hand, and she said, we got to go to the tree. So I followed her, and we ran, and there were no water there. The water didn't get there. We were safe, and so we started climbing the tree, and there was a boy standing there, and he wanted to climb the tree, too, but he couldn't. And so I was just like, we were trying to show him how to climb the tree, and he tried, and he just couldn't climb the tree. And so we just started climbing the tree, and then all these people, all of a sudden, a, a baby was above me. And so I'm looking at her and I'm scared and I'm panicking and I'm like, what are we going to do? And she's like, she looked at me and she was just like, promise me you're going to be okay. And I'm like, yeah, I'm fine. And she was like, you're going to be strong, you're going to be brave, and you're going like to do what you got to do. And I said, yes, I promise. And then all of a sudden it was like, it was a vision. I viewed her face up close. And then all of a sudden I started to zoom out and I saw this big, what was it? A gap in her head, like someone had taken a shotgun and blew her head off. And then I and I saw the the gap, and I'm like, oh my gosh, are you serious? And then she she was like, I love you, and she disappeared. And she faded away, and I'm just I'm screaming and I'm crying, and I'm like, baby, are you you can't leave me? And then all of a sudden, all these people started coming out of the woods, kind of coming from where the the beach was. And I saw one girl in particular that I recognized from school and saw a couple of other people. And they came, all came and stood and st was looking at me at th in the tree. And then they all just started fading away. One by one I started going around. I'm like, all of them died. Mm. And baby died. And I was just, I was crying. And I woke up and I'm like, what in the world was that? <laughs> and I was really hurt like I really lost someone and you just met that person yeah let me let me say what what um struck me when you said that baby is I think baby is symbolic to your higher self typically they say when you dream about certain people or certain things especially people that you never seen in tr in your life here I won't say true life because when you're dreaming you are living a life somewhere else on another dimension. I truly believe that. And I think baby was your higher self. And being shot in the back of the head is just maybe a wake up. Cause not you sit physically being hurt, but something like a wake up call for for some of some sort. So they say when you dream about certain people, even when you dream about certain relatives in your dreams, sometimes it's symbolic to you. Like, um, I used to have dreams a lot about your brother. And you know, when he was younger, like between the ages of 8 and, and 14, and you know how annoying mm -hmm. and irresponsible uh, he was. So um, someone told me, well, by you dreaming about him and him laying in the street and you're telling him, get up, get up, get up. Why won't you do this? You're telling your, your higher self giving you a message of telling you, wake up, quit being so immature about something. So I had to take that particular part of that dream and, and relate it to me and not take it so personal and relate it to the person I was actually dreaming about. So it just depends on you and your situation. Also, I would I would like to encourage people to send in some of the dreams that they don't know what means. It's really easy to um, interpret other people's dreams. Mm -hmm. Just like I told she was telling me or talking to her not too long ago about the monk in her dream that she spoke about with the dog. If you haven't seen the video, go look at the video. What was it called? Um, it's a, a video response to Astro Boo Baby's um, uh, Lucid Dreaming and um, Demonic Forces. Okay, so when you watch that video, if you haven't seen it, she'll talk about a monk. And I was telling her that that monk could have stood for the dog's 
guardian or his partner in some some way. And the smirk that she spoke about was the smirk. He was looking at her and he was just like, like you finally got him. And after all those attempts of her trying to get the dog, she finally got him. She figured out what his weakness was. Mm. And she figured out how to get rid of him and he couldn't come back. And so he's looking at her. He he realized how powerful she was. And she realized how smart, he, how smart she was. And he realized... Well, we gotta come up with another plan. You defeated us, but you defeated war is not over. Right, you got that battle, but we're gonna keep on going. And it's a, it's an ongoing battle of evil and good, evil and good. But I can't wait till a couple of weeks till we have our dinner party. We have yeah. all of our sister girls, our your cousins, my nieces, my sisters, your aunts, and um, we're gonna do the doggone thing. And yeah. and I look forward to it. And I am gonna go ahead and post up the video I talked about the different books. I did a book haul spiritual book haul so look forward to that in a couple of days so thank you uh, um, Ayana and Anaya my little grand friend okay thanks for watching and if you haven't already subscribed please subscribe thumbs up this video and rate talk to you later bye angels yeah.